You know, Web3 and blockchain, it often feels a bit like this uh, this walled garden, doesn't it? Mm -hmm, definitely. Powerful stuff inside, but tricky to get into. Exactly. Like, it's guarded by all this code, complex Ooh. jargon, makes it seem out of reach for, well, most people. Right. But there's this huge desire, this um, appetite for wider adoption, for everyone to be able to jump in and create things. That's the dream, yeah. So what if that wall, that barrier, wasn't just lowered? What if it was like completely removed? Okay, interesting thought. Imagine if anyone, you know, anyone with just an idea, not necessarily a tech expert, could actually build in this decentralized world. That would be a fundamental shift. Well, that's pretty much the vision behind some really big news we're diving into today. Ah, you're talking about Pi Network's announcement. Yes, exactly. On June 28th, 2025, they announced the launch of Pi App Studio. Right. Big news for their community. So our mission in this deep dive is to really unpack how this platform is trying to completely change Web3 app development. And what it means, yeah, for digital currency, decentralized ecosystems. Precisely. And the future of PyCoin itself, I imagine. Indeed. And the sources we've looked at, they give a pretty detailed picture of the vision, the mechanics, mm -hmm. and the, frankly, groundbreaking potential here. We'll definitely focus on how it impacts PyCoin and the whole Pi Network, especially as they're gearing up for that open network launch. Which is now slated for Q1 2026, right? That's the timeline they've given, yes. Yeah. Q1 2026. Okay, so let's really get into the big idea. What's Pi App Studio actually trying to do? Well, fundamentally, it seems designed to empower uh, everyday users. Everyday users, so not just developers. Exactly, people who aren't traditional programmers. Yeah. The goal is for them to create Web3 apps really easily. So it's not just about making it easier, it's changing who can build. That's the core of it, I think. The strategic goal feels much bigger than just, you know, launching another dev tool. Okay. It seems to be about speeding up the growth of a really comprehensive decentralized ecosystem. How are they doing that? What's the mechanism? Well, the key seems to be their use of advanced generative AI, Gen AI, mm -hmm. plus these um, pre-built templates. Ah, AI and templates. So simplifying the process. Hugely simplifying it. And it feels like a deliberate strategy to boost the utility of PyCoin, especially before that open network launch. Right, giving the coin more uses before it goes fully open. Exactly. Think about the sheer number and, maybe more importantly, the variety of apps that could pop up when you remove that technical burial. That's the real potential insight here, I believe. And they really emphasize that AI-powered text interface part, don't they? They do. The idea that you just describe what you want in plain English, no code. That's the promise. Yeah. You describe it, and the AI tools generate a basic application for you. That's, well, that's radically different from how things are usually done. So, okay, how does it actually work? Like, walk me through it from the user side. It sounds pretty straightforward, actually. Yeah. You start by picking an app, to maybe a chatbot, maybe a game, something like that. Got it. Select a category. Then... The really crucial bit, you provide a simple, clear description of what you want the app to do. Just a description. Yeah. And the sources give a great example. Something like uh, an app that helps new plant owners care for their house plants through watering schedules and light tips. Okay. Very practical. Right. And what's fascinating is the AI then takes that description, that simple text, uh -huh. and just converts it directly into a ready-to-use application. It's like translating thoughts into Web3 code. That's the core function. But does it offer more? It seems so. Mm -hmm. The platform apparently has dynamic customization features. Meaning? Meaning you can tailor these AI-generated apps based on your own specific expertise. Ah, so if I know a lot about, say, graphic design or dog training. Or cooking or whatever your niche is, yeah. yeah. You can tweak the app to reflect that knowledge. Okay, that's interesting. And the idea behind that seems to be ensuring the apps provide real added value to the community. Right, tapping into diverse real world knowledge, not just generic apps. Exactly. It feels like a way for niche passions to actually find a home on the blockchain. Hmm. Hashtag tag 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 three, integration and ecosystem synergy. That makes sense. So this new app studio, where does it actually fit within the existing Pi network? How does it integrate? Ah, integration. That seems key. It's designed to be deeply, seamlessly integrated. Okay. Where does it live, so to speak? It's woven right into the Pi browser. The Pi browser, which existing users are already familiar with. Precisely. For Pi users, that browser isn't just for surfing the web. It's their main gateway to the whole Pi ecosystem. It's where they interact with dApps already. So it's not some separate tool they have to learn? Nope. 
And what's really quite clever is how they've embedded it. It includes a sandbox environment. A sandbox for testing. Exactly. A secure, cost-free place to test your apps thoroughly. Without spending real pie or risking anything on the main network? Correct. You test without risk, without real transaction fees, before deploying to the main app where things are you know, permanent. That's crucial. Definitely. Plus, the existing ecosystem interface, which already has around 20 key apps, mm -hmm. is right there. So this deep integration means basically zero learning curve for current users. The tools are where they already are. Making it easy to access the new apps and use PyCoin for transaction. You got it. Which naturally supports their bigger goal of global adoption for PyCoin. Hashtag, tag, 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 IVC, the economic model, and guardrails. Okay, building something like this aimed at encouraging so much creation, yeah. there must be some kind of economic model behind it, right? Yes, and it's quite an interesting one. How so? To actually create an application, there's a nominal fee. It's 0.25 pi coin. 0.25 pi, that sounds pretty small. It is small, but it's framed less as a revenue stream and more as um, a commitment mechanism. A commitment? How do you mean? Well, unlike maybe giving out grants to developers, this small upfront cost requires the builder to have some skin in the game, so to speak. It signals they're serious. Ah, so it could act as a kind of filter, maybe encourage more quality-focused builders? That seems to be the thinking. A subtle economic filter for commitment. Interesting. What about guardrails? Security, compliance. Right. That brings up another important point. Know your customer or KYC. KYC. Okay, standard practice in many crypto areas. Yes, and it's required here too. For any app to actually run on the main app, uh -huh. the creator has to complete KYC by February 28, 2026. February 2026. This yeah. does raise that perennial question, doesn't it? Balancing accessibility with necessary regulation. Especially for a network aiming for global reach. Exactly, because KYC requirements can be tricky in some regions, you know, issues with identity documentation or privacy concerns. So that could be a friction point. It definitely could. It highlights that tension between needing security and compliance versus wanting truly universal, easy access. Okay, so let's pull this together. What are the real standout innovations here? The benefits for someone listening, maybe they want to create an app, maybe just use them. Why should you care? Well, there are several key benefits that really make this potentially quite impactful. First, that dynamic customization we talked about. Right. Tailoring apps to your own expertise. Yeah. That means users can build apps reflecting their actual knowledge. This should lead to way more diversity and hopefully higher quality in niche applications that solve real problems. Okay. That's benefit one. Second, the user-friendly interface. It's designed to be simple. Those AI tools drastically cut down the need for programming skills. Shifting the focus from coding to just the idea. Exactly, from syntax to creativity. Third, there's a big emphasis on community support. How so? By actively empowering non-specialists, people without tech backgrounds, it aims to get the global community involved in building the ecosystem. Making it richer, more responsive. That's the goal, a more decentralized development process itself. And finally, versatile purposes meaning it supports different kinds of apps. Yes, chatbots, games, practical tools, a wide array. This really expands the potential scope and usefulness of the whole Pi network. So taken together, these benefits are really about igniting innovation globally and making Web3 actually accessible beyond the usual tech crowd. That seems to be the core objective, unlocking creativity in potentially millions of people. Hashtag tag, 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 future challenges to watch for. Right, but let's inject a dose of reality here. No big, ambitious platform launches without hitting some bumps in the road. What are the potential challenges Pi App Studio might face? That's a really important consideration, and the sources do acknowledge potential hurdles. Such as? Well, for one, it's launching in beta. So, you know, bugs, performance issues, those are always possible as more people start using it. Standard beta phase stuff. Okay. okay. Then there's that nominal fee, the 0.25 Pi. Mm-hmm. While it's small, if users don't feel the value they get is clear or if they run into problems... It could cause some grumbling. It could lead to dissatisfaction, yeah. Uh -huh. Perceived value has to match the cost, however small. Makes sense. Anything else? And then there's the KYC requirement for mainnet deployment. We touched on that. The accessibility versus regulation issue. Exactly. <sighs> While it's crucial for security and compliance, it could make it harder for some users to fully participate, especially depending on where they are in the world. Different levels of digital ID infrastructure, privacy norms. Right. So connecting this to the bigger picture, 
It really boils down to managing that delicate balance. Pushing for fast growth versus... Versus dealing with the friction points that inevitably come with security, compliance, and just, you know, real world rollout. Hashtag tech tag outro. So wrapping this up, the launch of Pi App Studio back on June 28th, 2025, really feels like a major milestone for Pi Network, doesn't it? It certainly seems like a significant turning point in their journey, yes. It's a pretty bold attempt to build out that comprehensive decentralized ecosystem they're aiming for. Using AI, simplifying tools. Yeah. It's all geared towards enabling more valuable applications. And boosting PyCoin's utility in the process. Absolutely. With that tight integration into the Pi browser and the focus on community-led development, mm -hmm. it definitely positions Pi Network as, well, a strong contender in the blockchain space. Lots of potential for growth, then. Significant potential, I'd say. Provided, of course, they navigate those challenges we just discussed. Right, the beta issues, the fee perception, the KYC friction. If they manage those well, the potential is definitely there. So, the final thought for you, listening. What does all this actually mean for you? Could Pi App Studio really be the platform that finally democratizes Web3 development? The platform that lets your everyday ideas find a home on the blockchain without needing to write a single line of code. Think about that. How could this shift change who builds on the decentralized web? And maybe more importantly, who really benefits from its power? 